Hey everybody, it's Monday night and I am sitting down here to make a little video with you guys. Uh, hopefully we don't get too many interruptions because I still got some kids roaming around and Tom's in the living room playing a game so it's kind of noisy but hopefully you guys can hear everything alright and I hope you guys had a great day today. Um, this morning I started some muffins. I had been saving bananas in the freezer for I don't know a while whenever we have bananas and they start to go bad like turn brown I'll just toss them into the freezer and then when I have a big pile of them I make banana muffins so t yesterday I thought out all my bananas and then um, today I was gonna make bake banana muffins so I made this giant batch of muffin batter and I was thinking that it seemed like it was thicker than normal but I thought well maybe it's because I made such a big batch and it's just not like I normally do it so I went ahead and I baked up the first set and so I have these big um, pans muffin tins that hold 24 muffins in each one so I had 48 muffins going the first time and when I pulled them out of the oven they had all kind of fallen and I thought huh maybe I need to bake them longer so I baked them a little longer and whatever and then I did the next batch and I didn't have quite enough batter to finish the whole 48 for that batch so I went ahead and started making a new thing of batter and that's when I realized oh my goodness I forgot to put eggs in the last <laughs> batter so that's what was wrong with it so I actually needed to put a dozen eggs in for the amount of batter that I made and I didn't put any eggs in so my muffins were kind of sad the first batch was. The rest of them worked out fine. Um, but this afternoon we had uh, some of the homeschool moms over and the kids to do a uh, Charlotte Mason workshop DVD. So like 50 of the muffins that were collapsed got eaten by all the kids that were here today. So it all worked out alright. But I felt a little sheepish when I realized that I had forgotten to put the eggs in. Um, let's see. This afternoon after everybody went home from the uh, homeschool meeting that we had then I went and worked out in the garden for a while and got all of their potatoes planted and um, Tom was home and he was done with all his work so he helped me build this um, little thing for the bunny I wanted to build like a little movable little cage thing so that we could put him out in the garden and we could have him help us eat some weeds and things out there so we got that all built today and it turned out really great and I'm very happy with it it's super cute and Snowball really liked laying out on the ground we left him in it for about an hour and he seemed to really like having um having dirt underneath of him instead of you know wood in the cage so it'll be nice for him to get to get a little bit of uh more natural rabbit living if you can call that in a cage we're calling it his vacation home so he got to spend time in his vacation home this afternoon um so i can't remember now who it was that asked about the goal cards that i had in the uh my first grade binder homeschool video i think it was i'm not for sure i can't remember now but um so i thought today that i would show you guys how i make my own goal cards I, the one that was in the binder in the video is one of them that I have bought from ACE but I thought that I would show you how to make your own if you would like to do that so that's what I'm going to show you for the rest of this video today <clears throat> so this is the goal card that I had in the video and the size is it's four inches by seven inches so it's just a mix between the five by eight card and the four by six card you can kind of see that so I usually like to use a five by eight card when I make my homemade gold cards sorry for all the shadows here um, I like this size just because I can add more um, subjects into it so this one was made to be used in a school setting so you do your math English word building, literature and creative writing, science, social studies, and Bible reading. Um, but since we homeschool, there's other subjects that we do, and since it's just like more of an all-day thing, I like to add a lot more lines in mind for a lot more subjects. So I'm going to show you here how to do that. So um, 
Oh, and I should say that I got these uh, big blank 5x8 cards at Office Depot. And then the 4x6 size you can get at Walmart or probably, I don't know where else. But anyways, I wouldn't probably make one with a 4x6 card. But if you didn't need as many spaces, then you could go ahead and try it with a 4x6 card. So, alright, so here we go. Okay, so I'm going to start here in Microsoft Word and I'm going to choose a new blank document. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is go to Page Layout and we're going to pick Size and I'm going to make it 5 by 8 so I can print on my 5 by 8 cards. So right here is the 5 by 8 index card. Then I'm going to change the orientation to be landscape and I'm going to change the margins to be narrow. Next I'm going to type in a spot to write the name at the top. I'm going to change my, um, oh I forgot that I want to get rid of the spacing, so I'm going to click no spacing. Then I'm going to change my font to the one I like and I'm going to make it bigger, maybe about there. And I'm going to push the tab key over a couple of times and make a spot to write the date. I'm going to push enter and now I'm going to insert a table. And the goal card that ACE sells has the, um, the days of the week listed down the side for these bigger cards, I like to list them across the top because it makes the cell that you write in more rectangle shaped than um, it'll be more of a square if you do it down the side when you add lots of columns. So I'm going to go ahead and put that I'm going to have, let's say, about 10 columns. That'll be the subjects that I have. And then for the rows, I'm going to put six. So I have one for each day of the week plus one for writing the subjects at the top. So now what we're going to do is, um, actually you know what, I don't really like the way that that's looking. Let's see what happens when I put it in the other shape. I'm going to go down to the next page and put another one and see what, what it looks like when I flip it opposite. So let's insert a table and let's try 6 and 10 and see what happens. Oh yeah, that does look better like that. Yeah, that's what I meant to do, isn't it? <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I meant to do. I just told you I was going to do that and then I didn't and I just did the opposite. Okay. No wonder it didn't look right. Okay, so let's delete this one. Let's cut it. Now I got the one I want. Hmm, having a moment there. Okay. So now this is going to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Actually, it looks like I have enough space that I could just go ahead and write in like that. And I'd like these to be centered, so I'm going to go ahead and highlight those and center them. Now down the side, I'm going to put my subjects. And of course, you can put these in any order you want to. I like to put in um, extra stuff like um, for getting on privilege. We'll put a, a line for that so that anything that they need to do, like if they need to work on their memorizing their scripture or if they need to do a service project or something, they have some place on their goal card that they can write that in and to remember. Um, we also do Greek and what is something else that we do? Sometimes I'll put stuff like working on their nature notebooks or um, 
if they have all of this projects. So maybe they need a science project or a social studies project. So we'll go ahead and we'll write it in somewhere during the week so that we remember to do that. So that's what I'll put on this one. Of course, if you had smaller fonts, you could add even more rows. So I'll change this and show you what I mean here. I'm going to make these down to 12. And um, actually, you know what? I'm going to do all the cells because these all are having the bigger font. So put all of them at 12. And you'll see that they get much smaller. And then if I wanted to add more lines, I could just go to the last cell here and I could just put the tab key and that adds another line. And if I want to get rid of some, you just highlight and right click and say delete cells and I want to delete the entire row and that takes it off. Okay, so let's now like make it look a little fancier. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this top row, go to design and here I can pick how thick I want my line. We'll do three points on this one. And I can choose here. This is the bottom border, top border, left, right. This is getting rid of all the borders. This is making every single line be thicker. But I want to do just, actually, you know what? I'll probably do um, the, yeah, I'll do the outside borders on that. And then I'm going to highlight all of this and do the outside borders again. Now if I want to make a distinction between the days then I can highlight the whole thing and I can go up here and I'm going to click to make them um, about one and a half points and I'm going to choose inside vertical borders and that'll make a thicker line in between each day of the week. I can make these colored. I could actually make my font a color, but I'm going to show you how to do the whole row, make it colored. So since math is yellow in our paces, we're going to go ahead and turn this yellow. So I'm going to highlight those cells and then back on the home, I'm going to choose this paint bucket and you can pick the yellow here or you can click more colors and you can pick maybe a lighter shade of yellow like that. You can even find a lot more shades of color here on the custom, but we'll just stick with the standard. I'm going to pick that light yellow there. I like to go with a little lighter color so it's easy to see when you um, write on it. So then English will pick a lighter red color and social studies will have green. And science will be blue. Word building is purple. And we'll do pink for literature. And I'll just pick any color for privilege. Let's pick this orange here. And Greek will do maybe a brownish color. And our projects. Let's see. We'll make it gray. Okay, so that's the basic way of making it, and you can do lots of different things as far as um, the way that it looks. So I'm just going to show you, one thing I'll show you is that if for some reason you wanted to um, combine cells, like uh, let's say that this name part was part of this, I'll show you down here. If I actually wanted to make that part of the table, then I could take this and I could just highlight these four cells here and click right click and then pick merge cells and that makes one combined cell. And then I could put my date like this and then merge these two cells. 
like that. Or I could undo that by clicking that cell and right clicking and then I could click split cells and I'm going to turn it back into two columns and that takes it apart. Although now you can see I got a fat line there that I need to fix so then I would highlight that, go back to design and re-click that and turn that back into the same size it was before. I can then click the undo button if I want and undo all of it put it back the way it was just like that. You can change the colors of um, all your lines too if you wanted to for some reason. So I'll just show for an example here. I could pick my pin color and I could turn these into orange lines instead of... Oops, now I took them all away. Instead of black. So there's all sorts of fun things you can do to make them um, personalized. I sometimes like to make different fonts for different subjects and things like that just just for fun. But that's the basic way that you can make those. Then go ahead and print it out and you can print double sided if you want to so that um, you can get twice as much out of one card. So I'm going to go ahead and print one out and then I'll show you how it looks once it's printed. Okay, so here it is all printed out, and I think I'm running low on yellow ink, so the coloring looks a little odd, but um, it worked out pretty good, and uh, you can put a lot more subjects on here than the one that you can buy, although you can buy those others from ACE if you don't want to make your own. I'll show you this one that I made for myself last week, and you can see that I forgot that I should have switched it and had the uh, days at the top and the things down the side because now I have these funny squares. So when I remake this one, I'm going to flip it so that it's like that because that like, makes a lot more sense. So I hope that was helpful for you. And tomorrow I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how I make the star charts that we use in the front of our homeschool binders. So you guys can check back tomorrow and we'll see you again soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe.